I want to help you imagine what it would look like for you to live on a homestead. So Michelle and I are going to take you through our day today. There are some routines, but there are also a few new and fresh things happening on the homestead right now. And along the way, we want to talk about something that we think about a lot and that might ruffle a few feathers. My alarm goes off at 6 a.m. and after a little quiet time, I go out to milk the cow. Some days this can feel like a mundane routine, but I truly love getting out in the fresh air right away every morning and spending some time in the peace and solitude. Our calf Holly is penned up for the night so that we get all of the morning's milk. So she's excited to see the morning get started and Maddie is right there waiting to come in the barn to be milked. We had some warm days. This week it's cold again. I have to say, I'm ready for the warm days. Using a milker is really nice, but I will have to say, it's not quite as romantic as hand milking. But once her production drops back down to about two gallons, I'll be happy to get back to hand milking again. If you haven't watched some of our other videos and you're wondering why I'm tying her up, this is just to train her and get her used to being tied up, get her used to the lead rope so that she's used to holding still someday when she's a milk cow. And then also I take her outside and lead her around with the lead rope and stuff. But this is the first step while Maddie is being milked for her to be tied here and it really gets her used to it. Now Maddie does have a round bale of hay and that is the way to go for winter. Just a whole lot less hassle to have a round bale in there and I have to give a bale of hay all the time. But I have been giving her some alfalfa hay the last while. It has really boosted her milk production. Being in the homesteading community, we are constantly getting bombarded with fear messages about the state that the world is in. We hear about all the bad things that are happening or could happen, and it honestly seems like some people are energized by researching worst case scenarios and then spreading shocking news. There's channels and Instagram pages that send messages like, learn traditional skills so that you can go on with life unaffected while the world crumbles around you. And this may be an unpopular opinion, but we don't think that homesteading and traditional ways of living will make you immune to problems if the world goes south. Of course, self-sustainability can help and it can make you more resilient, but don't fall for the idea that homesteading will make you immune to problems in the world. I've changed up our schedule with breakfast a little bit. I used to work for like an hour after the kids got up and then I would make breakfast, but I have started making breakfast right away just because school is taking a little bit longer. We've gotten a little bit behind and I'm having to double up. So I am starting school earlier and I just, I start making breakfast at eight o'clock. We eat as soon as possible. And then I try to be doing school by like 9.15 to 9.30. We have so many potatoes in the basement that I don't want to go to waste but they're starting to get a little bit shriveled and so they have to be used up. So I just throw a whole bunch of baked potatoes into the oven every week and then we eat them for breakfast with hamburger and a couple eggs and cheese. I'm always trying to find ways to add things to eggs to disguise them because my kids just don't like eggs. Another wellness routine that I've had this year that I feel like has worked really, really well is giving my kids some silver as well as some trace mineral drops every single morning and a little bit of juice. I honestly just kind of struggle trusting multivitamins. There's always things in there that I just don't really love. You actually can't taste the trace minerals or the silver. And I just really feel like they haven't been getting as sick as much. And when they do get sick, it doesn't last as long. We'll get back to Michelle and breakfast in a little bit, but while she's making breakfast, the kids are out doing their chores. Even though we don't think homesteading will make you immune to all the problems in the world, we do really value this lifestyle and we want to pass that on to our kids. Whether they choose to follow the same path when they're older is up to them, but for now, we really want to teach them responsibility and the value of hard work. 
They each have their own responsibilities with the animals. They're learning to appreciate where their food comes from, and it's a way for them to make a little spending money. One thing we really work towards on our homestead is making the rewards outweigh the hard work. We explain the value of what we're doing, but we also have to make it more tangible. Sometimes that means taking the day off to do something fun. Sometimes it's just an afternoon going out to get ice cream, but whatever we're doing, we're all learning to appreciate the simple things in life. Another routine that I have going right now every morning while I'm making breakfast is I rinse my sprouts. And this morning actually, they are all ready to go. I'm gonna rinse them one more time just because I like to get all the seed hulls out of there. Milk's ready to get out of the freezer. All of these sprouts came from two tablespoons of seeds. It's pretty cool. I like to just like tear apart the clumps a little bit, but then I wash them, dry them a little bit and stick them in the fridge. These will keep in the fridge for like a solid week to two weeks. Uh, they don't last in our house more than a week so far. So I haven't, you know, figured out if they last more than a week, but they aren't at all slimy and they've been in the fridge for a solid week. So I'm guessing two weeks is the max that they would last. One thing that some people mentioned is that their sprouts got like white and fuzzy and they just, I guess, assumed that it was mold. So one thing that your sprouts will do, I noticed is the next morning, like after you've rinsed them, when they're more dry, the roots look like very fuzzy and hairy. That's not mold, that's just the roots. So unless they're like legit moldy, don't throw them out. You can see the seed pods like all kind of come to the top. I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit and let them dry and fluff up a little bit before I put them into the fridge. I read online your sprouts should be dry before you put them in the fridge. Mine are never completely dry, but I mean, I like to at least let them air dry a little bit. Mommy. What are you? I'm hungry. You're hungry, okay. How can you be hungry? You had a glass of milk and apple and peanut butter and strawberries already. This morning we also have pureed strawberries from the freezer. These taste like summer. They are so good. I try to like ration these normally throughout the winter, but we have a lot of them left and I want to get them used up before we have to start filling the freezer again. So we are gorging ourselves on these. Scared people are easy to control. They'll flock to pages that promise them safety. The times in my life where I've felt the most fear are times when I've been lonely and disconnected from people. Humans are not meant to be islands. We weren't designed to do it all ourselves. We were designed for community. It's pretty dang hard, if not impossible, to be completely self-reliant in today's world. In our humble opinion, your best security in a time of crisis is to be surrounded by community. Reach out to other humans and learn to get along. Learn to share, learn to be nice, all the things you learned in kindergarten. Getting along with people and sharing resources are far more effective strategies for taking care of your family in a time of crisis than trying to have your own little kingdom where you drive yourself crazy trying to do it all on your own. The other day when I was down in the cold room checking all of our stuff, I realized that a lot of my butternut squash are starting to get some spots on them that are soft. And so I just decided I'm gonna cut them all up and bake them and put them in the freezer so that I don't have that like niggling thing in the back of my head that, oh, the butternut squash needs to be used up because soon they're just gonna start rotting and I'm going to waste a whole bunch of them. So today I'm just going to wash them, slice them in half and roast them in the oven and then I'll just scoop the insides out, puree it and put it into the freezer in freezer containers. We had a lot of bug issues on our butternut squash this year and I really feel like maybe the bugs burrowed some holes like into the squash because usually they last longer than this but like around those bites is where it started getting mushy. Normally butternut squash will way outlast any of the other vegetables. I just roast them whole, and then afterwards they're just so much easier to deal with than if you try to do stuff before you cook them. Also gonna put some water in the bottom. I'm guessing these will take about an hour or so to get really nice and soft. The next thing I'm gonna work on is something a little bit more fun, something interesting. 
So a ton of people have been telling me I should make fruit leather with all of my extra raspberries. We have tons of raspberries down in the freezer. I think like a dozen gallons at least. And so I decided I may as well experiment with some fruit leather. The kids are constantly eating, constantly needing snacks. So yesterday I made a batch of fruit leather with just raspberries and a little bit of cane sugar. And it turned out really yummy, but there was quite a bit of seeds in it even after I ran it through my food mill. So today I think I'm gonna tweak the recipe just a little bit. I mean, it's a very non-recipe, I don't really have a recipe. I'm just gonna use about a quart of frozen raspberries. And it was pretty sour as well. Raspberries are not very sweet. So I'm gonna add some strawberries so I can hopefully cut down a little bit on the sugar content of it. And I am going to then run them through the food mill and then put them in the blender and then run them through a sieve to hopefully get rid of a few more of the seeds. I'm not gonna measure the sugar. Yesterday I just put like, I don't know, maybe a quarter cup of sugar in. I don't want these to be like a sugary treat for my kids. I want it to be something really healthy. So I'm gonna say that's about like a heaping quarter cup of sugar. You can definitely use honey or maple syrup to sweeten this as well if you wanna be a little bit more natural. And I would totally have done that, except that I just kind of felt like, what's the point of adding something more wet in there? I felt like it was just gonna take more time in the oven to dehydrate. Okay, these have thawed completely. I added a pinch of salt, tiny bit of vanilla. Here you can see like how many seeds are still left in there that the strainer gets out. So here we have some very beautiful raspberry and strawberry sauce. It's like pretty much completely seed free. So the whole process of getting the seeds out took me about, I'm gonna say 10 minutes. The only problem with things like fruit leather, in my opinion, are that they take quite a bit of time and then my kids will eat them in like 15 minutes. Whether or not this is worth it is yet to be decided. <laughs> the batch I did yesterday took four hours to dry in a 170 degree oven, which is like the lowest setting that the oven can go to. The squash is cooled now. I let it sit out on the counter for quite a while because I do not like trying to scoop out the flesh when it's really hot. I'm putting these into freezer containers in like two cup portions because that's what my custard recipe takes and I'm guessing pumpkin breads will take around that. I find it much easier to scoop the flesh out of these after they're baked than to peel butternut squash before you bake them. They can be really difficult to peel and then they leave this horrible film on your hands that like makes your hands peel. I cannot even handle it. We've been homesteading for a decade now and there are still skills that we haven't mastered and sometimes we feel looked down on for that. In the beginning, fear was our motivator. We felt like we needed to learn and do everything like yesterday. We dove into this lifestyle head first and drove ourselves and everyone around us crazy. Fear is a way of doing that. Fear minimizes your life and makes you small. Fear isn't reality, it's a delusion, and fear will shut down the creative parts of your brain and set you up for failure. We've come to a place now where we homestead because it's the lifestyle we want, not because we're scared of what would happen to us if we didn't. You'll be far more successful with this lifestyle if you choose to enjoy the process. If there's anything our country needs right now, it's people who are happy and free. Doing some quick peanut butter and jelly for the kids for lunch. This is some sourdough sandwich bread that Michelle's been making is pretty good. And our homemade raspberry jam. Then after lunch, we are gonna go out and try to get something done that didn't get done in one of the last videos that was supposed to get done. Cutting down the raspberries. I do have to admit that I did get the adapter in the mail, but I haven't tried it yet. The adapter to put the blade on the weed eater to cut down the raspberries. So I guess we'll have to go out there and try again. We may end up with another video <laughs> without the raspberries being cut down, who knows. It's been a couple weeks, a couple weeks. <laughs> A couple weeks ago, I was gonna put this blade on here to cut down the raspberries, and uh, came to find out I need some kind of adapter kit. So I got one, but I haven't tested it out. I don't know if it'll actually like specifically fit this weed eater. So let's give it a try. That is on good and proper.
Okay, come out here. They are already budding, but it'll still be okay. They still need to be cut down. It's not too late yet. So everybody else stand back. We're always looking for ways to become more efficient on our homestead. That's what makes it possible for us to keep doing this without burning out. Thank you to those of you that recommended it. That was by far the easiest it's ever been to cut down those raspberries. And I bet this thing would work really good for the asparagus too. I will say though, that definitely something that it feels like you should be careful with. You got a saw blade on the end of a long stick. I felt really good about it. Like it didn't feel like it was kicking around or anything. I just took it slow and easy. So if you're wondering about a way to cut down your raspberries or asparagus, I guess do your own research and do whatever you feel comfortable with. But for me, I felt fine with it. And it was so easy to cut down those raspberry plants. Some of you probably already know we're gonna take out a section of these raspberries right here. Before you get jumping all over the place, we just need to take a section of them out of here because we just have so many raspberries. You've seen some of our previous videos, all the raspberries we've got in the freezer, raspberry jam, we've been eating that all winter long and we just have so many of them. We only have so much space and so much time so we wanna put something else here. We're not quite sure what for sure, but we are gonna put something else here. We're gonna dig the plants up and give them to friends and family. I'm actually gonna move that end post to here, but not right now. I just wanna get these wires out of the way so we can more easily dig these plants out. So windy out here. Very windy and slightly cold outside, but still going for my daily run. As many of you know, at the end of last year, I committed to running at least a mile a day. I've stuck with it and it's definitely become part of my daily routine. Because the mornings are still dark, I usually run in the afternoon, but that'll probably change once the days get longer and warmer. On a side note, in a quest to take care of some knee pain, I've started running in barefoot shoes. It's only been a couple weeks, so it's yet to be determined how it does for me, but it feels great and I really like it. Simple supper tonight, Michelle has had a chicken in the crock pot all day today. It is falling apart and it looks really good. Hopefully you didn't hear us downplaying the importance of homesteading and traditional skills. I think it's pretty obvious if you've been around for any amount of time that we're really passionate about this lifestyle. The message we're trying to get across is that living in fear will set you up for failure and homesteading won't fix all your problems. If homesteading is the thing that you're clinging to for comfort, you're going to panic when you feel like you can't manage all the work or master all the skills. Panic and overwhelm lead to burnout. We believe you'll be far better off in the long haul, taking it slow, enjoying the ride. What will happen will happen and it will be okay. We want to help you along on your journey. In every one of our videos, we want to inspire you and build your confidence. Just like in this video here that popped up for you to watch next. 